Hello and welcome to this first uh, first problem looking at uh, hypothesis testing on two population means. Now you'll see in, in this video that the process uh, in, in performing these tests with two populations uh, is extremely similar to uh, if you've seen the videos that we did uh, single population tests on. Uh, the process is the same, the rejection rules are the same, uh, there are just a couple of subtle little differences again uh, that, that differentiate it from those single population tests. Namely, the formulation of the hypothesis test itself will be a little bit different, uh, and secondly, of course, the formulas are a little bit different. But the process and everything, you'll see a lot of similarities here. So let's get into this exercise and then I'll talk about some of the differences uh, as they come up. So here we're looking at, uh, we've got a friend who has claimed that Ford owners are on average faster drivers than Honda owners. Although you may not dis uh, disagree with them, being the young statistician that you are, you decide to gather some data and perform a test. You set up a radar on the highway and you begin, begin collecting data. After one week, you found the average speed of, I'm just going to get out my pen so that I can highlight useful information, the average speed of 42 Hondas was 63 miles per hour, and the average speed of 53 Fords was 63.6 miles per hour, and we know the population standard deviation of the Hondas is 5.2, and for the Fords it's 5.4. Okay, so we've got here now all of our sample data. Part A, formulate the null uh, and alternative hypotheses. Okay, so this is where you'll see uh, one subtle difference. When we formulate these tests, so now we're working with two populations, so I'm gonna just right away put down my two populations. We're looking at the difference in two populations. Now, of course, the question comes up, well, here I've got mu1 and mu2. I've got two populations, the Ford owners and the Honda owners. Which one is which? In other words, which one am I going to define as population 1? Which one am I going to define as population 2? That decision can be arbitrary. Right, you don't necessarily have to put a lot of thought into that decision. However, whatever you decide will have an impact on your test because now when we have two populations, the distinction between a lower tail test and an upper tail test becomes somewhat arbitrary. I can perform a test to see is this one larger or faster than this one, or is this one smaller or slower than this one? So the distinction becomes less substantial. There might be one that might sound better than the other, an upper tail or a lower tail test. There might be one that just sort of sounds better within the context of the problem. Um, but let, let me just show you what I mean. If, if I just arbitrarily say, okay, the Ford is number one, I can hardly see that. If the Ford is number one and the Honda is number two, uh, let's see, is this, what kind of test are we going to do? My friend has claimed that Ford owners are on average faster drivers. So here I've got my, my um, sample data is in miles per hour. And so if this one here, I've defined number one as my Ford and number two as my Honda, I want to show that Ford average speed is greater than the Honda average speed. So this would be formulated as an upper tail test only because of how I've defined the terms. Notice that if I, oops, if I had arbitrarily, where'd my eraser go? If I had decided that the Ford is going to be population two and the Hondas are population one, well now this is no longer an upper tail test. If this is, if these are my Honda, oops, these are my Honda drivers and here are my Ford drivers, well now this had become a lower tail test. Okay, so, gee, my eraser's not working properly when I wanted to. Okay, so, this can be a lower tail test or an upper tail test. In the case, in the context of this problem, to me, as much as both of these would be correct formulations, to me, I wanna see that uh, this is, the four drivers are faster than the Honda drivers. The way this test is formulated it sounds to me as if I'm testing to see that the Honda drivers are slower than the Ford drivers. Now I know that sounds the same, or the Ford drivers faster, or faster, or the Honda drivers slower. Both of those are basically testing the same thing. But 
just to be as consistent as possible with the way this exercise has been has been stated I'm gonna go back to my population one and two so this is my Ford and my Honda and now I'm testing to see that Ford drivers are faster than the Honda drivers. Now, another way that we can formulate this here, this is this hypothesized difference. Sometimes the generic notation is D sub zero. I can test for any hypothesized difference. Are the Ford owners five miles an hour faster than the Honda, 10 miles an hour faster than the Honda, whatever. In this case, I'm just testing, checking to see that they are faster drivers. So just, is it greater than zero or not? So given that that hypothesized difference is simply zero, I can just rewrite this like this. And sometimes I find this is maybe a little bit easier to, to read uh, this notation rather than this. But either one, they're perfectly the same. So whichever one you're comfortable with. Justify this formulation. Well, I have formulated it in, in this way so that if the evidence uh, supports the alternative hypotheses, then I can show that, well, yeah, my friend's claim was, was right. I do have evidence to show that on average, Ford drivers are faster than Honda drivers. If my evidence supports the null hypotheses, well, then I can't, I can't support that claim. Uh, there, the evidence would demonstrate that they're no faster than uh, Honda drivers. Okay, so now let's get into our test statistic. So this is going to be a Z test because we know uh, we have the population standard deviations. So this is going to be a Z, X bar 1 minus X bar 2 minus that hypothesized difference divided by our standard error here, which is sigma 1 squared over N1 and sigma 2 squared over N2. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug in the numbers. And, and notice here, uh, having formulated this as, as Ford minus Honda, that now determines how I enter those values into the formula. So this is the sample mean for the Ford drivers, which is 63.6 minus the Honda drivers, which is 61, 61.3. So here we can see already that this is going to give us a positive test statistic. Had I defined my populations the other way around, this would be 61 minus 63, and now we'd have a lower tail test statistic. Uh, so it does change some of the results, but you'd still get exactly the same conclusions. Uh, divided by, here let's put in our sigmas. Uh, so this is going to be 5.4 squared over 60, no, 53 fourths plus 5.2 squared over 42 Hondas. Okay, where's my calculator here? Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this I'm gonna work with in the square root sign first, 5.4 squared divided by 53 plus 5.2 squared divided by 42 and square root that. So my denominator here is 1.09. And my numerator, 63.6 minus 61.3 is 2.3. Okay, so finally we have a test statistic, 2.3 divided by 1.09, 2.11. <laughs> 2.11. Okay, so there's our answer for for part uh, B, 2.11. Now we'll use the p-value approach to draw our conclusion. Okay, so let's go to our z tables. And we have a test statistic of 2.11. So again, we can go to the positive. There's my 2.11. That gives me a value of 0.9826, that would be in the lower tail. But we're doing an upper tail test, so what we want is one minus 0.9826. And if I go to the calculator, one minus 0.9826, that gives me a value, a p-value of 0 0.0174. Now again, we could have taken advantage of the symmetry of this distribution and looked up negative 2.11, 2 
And wouldn't you know it, we get exactly the same result, 0 0.0174. So I have a p-value equal to 0 0.0174. Now, again, just to, to come back to the arbitrariness of, of the formulation, had I done this as a lower tail test, so had this been a lower tail, my HA, mu1, mu2, if this was Honda minus Ford as my alternative, all of these calculations would have been the same except for this numerator. The denominator still would have been exactly the same magnitude and it's always going to be positive. So our numerator would have been different. We would have had a test statistic of negative 2.11 and of course as we just saw looking at the Z tables, that gives us exactly the same p-value. So we would have gotten exactly the same results. So when we draw our conclusion, here we don't have an alpha given to us, so we can do this at the alpha 5 level of significance. So for this upper tail test, having obtained a p-value of 0 0.0174, that gives me sufficient evidence to reject so I have evidence to support the alternative hypotheses, which means that I can support my friend's claim that the, on average the Ford owners are driving faster than the Honda owners. And so that would, that's my final conclusion, that the Ford owners are in fact faster than the Honda owners. Had we done this as a two-tailed test, we would have gotten exactly that same p-value, so we would have rejected our null hypotheses, and in that case, we would have had evidence to support this alternative hypothesis, which means to say, I have evidence to show that the Honda drivers are on average slower than the Ford drivers. So the outcome is the same, regardless of if we'd set this up as an upper tail test or a lower tail test. Okay, now D, let's uh, look up our critical value approach. So this uh, for a Let's see, this is going to be a Z alpha, so this is Z.05 for an upper tail test. Again, if we were doing a lower tail test, this would just be negative Z.05. So let me go to our Z tables, and we've seen this one a few times before. We're looking for 0.05, and it's right in between these two. So that Z value for 0.05 is 1.6 and then we are just between these two right in here so 0 0.45 or 0 0.045 so that's 1.645 and again that's going to be the same in absolute value for either one whoops what happened here so this is going to be 1.645 for an upper tail test if we were doing this as a lower tail test we would have this as negative oops i want a different color so as to not confuse too much one, negative 1 1.645 and again we would have gotten exactly uh, the same conclusion. So this all works, we have a test statistic of 2.1 in our distribution that test, that critical value is here 1.645 and my test statistic is somewhere out here 2.11 so that is in our rejection space. So once again, coming back to E, I think I've already answered E, but just for completeness, we definitely have sufficient evidence to reject our null hypotheses, uh, which allows us to say that on average, the Ford owners are faster than the Honda owners, or simultaneously, depending on how we defined our terms, we could also say that the Honda drivers are slower than the Ford owners both of these outcomes are the same. Okay, so I hope this helps. Uh, hopefully I haven't caused any confusion by considering both uh, an upper tail test and a lower tail test at the same time. Uh, I just want to show that that decision is arbitrary, but it's entirely dependent on how these are defined. Uh, an upper tail test is correct with this definition. It would be incorrect with the alternative definition. So hopefully that all makes sense. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll do a few more videos here. Okay, bye-bye.